expect this tomorrow. The weather's going to stink again. It kills these racing days when it's bad weather. It kills it. Absolutely kills it. You can't judge these horses. Some of them never run in the slop. It's, it, tracks are different. They dry differently. Uh, it's just, it, it makes, listen, you can hit a long shot now and again, but it really kills racing. When you have these big racing days with a lot of stake races, and racing fans look forward to these days. They look forward to the undercards as much as they look forward to the big race. Because, you know, you get a, rate, a day where you get six or seven stake races on these undercards. That's how they've built these days up now. They're good Fridays and they're better Saturdays, and they're great undercards. You get, you know, a lot of times the undercards are much better to bet on than the, than the main race. I mean, you get really great racing, and uh, instead it's wiped out. Now, the horses still run because they made the trek there, and there's big purses, so they're going to run, and some of them like it better than others, but some can't lift a leg in this weather, and some are upgraded, but sometimes you don't know which ones are which, and breeding doesn't always do it. You know, sometimes you'll get a mud mark on a horse because his sire was one, uh, you know that, uh, but you just don't know. But one thing we know, Justify already likes it wet. He likes it sloppy. He likes it fast. He likes it. He just likes it right now. Four for four in an enormously impressive fashion. And again, he'll be two to five or one to five. And you don't win a lot by, you know, you, you, you don't get rich in a racing bet again, uh, on one to five horses. That's for sure. Joe in uh, New Jersey. What's up, Joe? Mike, how you doing? Welcome back. What's happening? So. I, uh, my stance on James is the same as yours, right? The Excuse guy's me. unbelievable. Yes. My stance on LeBron is the right. same as James. Right. Um, right. Or, Mike, or, or is yours. Right. You can't compare the two players, but my question is this. Right. If LeBron wasn't, if his personality wasn't like it was, and mm-hmm. he didn't do things like the decision, and off the court he kind of makes it about himself sometimes, do you think people would have the bias against them? Because people go against them all the time. They well, you, you know, up. I think he's easy to hate uh, because he's, he's had so because he's had so much control of everything. He did not handle his decision well. Uh, I think it cost him two years of his life. I wish he never had left. I think he would have been better off never leaving. Um, you know, he didn't handle it well. He didn't adjust well. Uh, he didn't play well those first two years for him. Uh, right. uh, you know, so, so it, it was very costly to him. You can say, so as many but, good things as you can say about him, people always but if come you, back with, well, yeah, what if about you, this? If you, if you like the game of basketball and if you understand the game of basketball, you are often amazed at what he does on the basketball Amazed. Floor. Position that, one through five. Amazing. He's the best player on the court for the last 12 He's years. the most amazing. I've never seen anybody give the effort on both ends of the floor like he gives. I've never seen anything <laughs> like it. He is a specimen for the ages. I have never seen anybody give that effort. I mean, even late in the game the other day, the game's over. He made a block that was so good, it was unbelievable. And again, it, 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 you know, it was just effort that it's amazing he still had at that point in the game. Right. I mean, right. he's remarkable. And he's almost 34 years old. Yeah, he's only he's got, like, listen, I said he's got two of these years left. Uh, maybe I'm wrong and he's only got one. Maybe I'm wrong and he's yeah. got three. The, uh, the window, the window could be closing. Oh, it's closing. Like, listen, you can't LeBron. listen. Right. Even LeBron he's can't got. beat Father Time. It's closing. The window is clearly closing. The question is, you know, what does he do now? Where does he go? Where does he go to combat? You know, where does he go to combat uh, what's been built in Golden State? Where does he go? I don't know. Andrew and Scarsdale, what's up, Andrew? Perfect segue. Um, you look at the NBA landscape. I don't know if there's a if if his primary goal is to is to maximize his. his well, his primary goal is not the the primary goal is not money for sure. He's got more of that right. than he can count. We know that. Okay, so it's not money. Uh, it's not scoring or any records because he's got all of those that he needs. Uh, it's about winning championships. It can't be about anything else. Um, where does he go? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I I can't. I can't see him going to Philly. Philly's the best Simmons, place. Simmons, Simmons is awful off the ball. Uh, LeBron would have to change his game. I think. No, Philly. Um, would, LeBron would. Well, LeBron would change his game in the regular season, but he wouldn't change it in the postseason, and that would hurt Simmons a lot. He would change it in the regular it, season for sure. But uh, where could he go west? There's nowhere for him to go west. Where would he go? Yeah, I mean, there's, you know, you can't, I mean, him and uh, another Max Free agent on, like, the Lakers, that's not going to get them to nope. Golden State or Houston. Nope. Um, I, he may just, he may just have to ride it out in Cleveland and, and, and hope they can do something with the pick or hope they can, they can work a miracle with the trade. But yeah, can I don't dream, know if there's a place can, for him to go. Can we dream and think that there's some way that you can, 
shake the Nick roster to where it's him, the Porzingis, him, and somebody else, and they have enough to at least take a shot? Can we dream that? I don't even know if we could. I don't even know if we could. Because I'll tell you right now, I would like to see that. I, I tell you right now, I'd be at the Garden 50 times next year if that happened. Uh, be, I, I would like to see that happen. Uh, but do I believe it? No, I don't believe it. Uh, but I tell you right now, if they if they had one more wing player and Porzingis, you could almost make a case where you could see. That's what I would do if I'm the Knicks. If I'm Fisdale, if I'm their hierarchy, I say to them right now, how do we structure this that we go and we sit with him and say, I'm giving you the keys to get this done with you here, this guy here, and Porzingis here. Here's how we can do this and and sell him. Secondary is all the garden stuff, but I can show you where we could win. That's what I'd be tinkering with if I were them right now. Now, whether that's even humanly possible, I would doubt it. I, I, I think it's far-fetched to even dream it. Uh, but my point is, what your whole point, if you're a franchise right now, is you're trying to you know, send him. Plus, he also knows that he's got to move because the Celtics are going to be mighty next year. I mean, we, we know that. When they add, when they add uh, you know, two players, two very good players to this mix, they are going to be really tough. I mean, exceedingly tough. So from that standpoint, you know, that's that's there to deal with. It's going to be fun to see what happens. Iron Staten Island, what's up, Iron? Hey, what's happening, Mike? How are you? Good. You know, you were talking about Ben before, and, and you know, it's amazing. You know, he won a Super Bowl. Eli won a Super Bowl. But, you know, Philip Rivers just flies under the radar. He just doesn't get... He's had a good career. He says, and he hasn't had the career the other two have. He's a wonderful competitor. Uh, he he tries very hard. He also does a lot of jerky things sometimes, but he's a good player. He's had good playoff games. He's never been on a championship team, uh, but he's had a good career. He's had a really good career. It's not as good as the other two guys, but he's had a good career. Well, you know, it's funny because his numbers are compared to Ben's. They're, they're very, you know... No, they, his numbers are good. His numbers not, are good. Yeah, very, yeah, very his good. His numbers are good. He's been on some lousy teams. No, like really, said, he's got good numbers, except he's been a little turnover prone. Plus, he hasn't had the, you know, he hasn't had a chance to, to have the big moment yet. No, I know, and, you know, but who knows? You'll see what's going to happen. But it, it, you look at this, these draft classes, you look at the 83 class, you look at that 04 class, and now you look at the one that just took place. Um, you know, if you had a crystal ball, I think Donald and Rosen are both going to be excellent quarterbacks. Um Baker Mayfield isn't my style of quarterback. Uh, I'm not sure where he's going to be at. And Josh Allen's the unknown. But I think at least two out of the four are going to turn out to be very, very good Well, the Rosen thing, which would have scared me, is the fact his father's one of the most prominent surgeons in the United States. His kid has already had concussions. Uh, I don't know if his father pulls him out of the sport. That's the thing I'd be afraid of uh, with him. If he took a hit to the head early in his career, does his father pull him? His father was up to be the Surgeon General. Uh, he's a major uh, neurosurgeon. He, the question is, does he want his kid playing football? I mean, I think that's the that actually was brought up to me by a couple NFL teams about him. Is that they liked him. They also didn't like how cocky he was. Some people don't like that. Listen, some people like that in quarterbacks. I've never minded that in quarterbacks. I don't want a quarterback who alienates his whole team, but I don't mind a quarterback who's confident. I never have. I, I, I like quarterbacks who are confident. But I think the fine line is being confident, but not alienating your whole team. You want your right. team. See, Joe Namath was cocky, but Joe Namath's team swore by him. He won them over. They he won them over. Won right. them over, and that's what that's what he just said. Ben has to do. You have to win your team over. You have to win your linemen over to where they will not only believe in you, they will fight for you. They will go out there and protect you. They will say nobody, t as we used to tell them, nobody touches Namath. And J Buddy Ryan said that the reason his whole philosophy in defensive football became about attacking the quarterback at all costs is because he was on the coaching staff where Weeb Eubank went into the room and told his coaches, the only thing we will guarantee is that nobody touches Namath. And he said, now my whole deal is to get to that quarterback when we here try everything we can to keep the quarterback upright. And that was the weeb chant. Nobody gets the Namath. And that's where Buddy said he came up with the idea of tacking the quarterback at any cost. So whatever it took to get the quarterback knocked down, that's what he believed in. And it came from coaching on that, you know, that early jet team, which he did. 
You know, he was defensive coach on that team. Uh, we have uh, Jerry Bailey coming up. Then Steve Summers coming up. And then Yankee baseball coming up. Hopefully you'll have a dry couple of minutes. Hopefully you can get out and hit the golf ball on Sunday. I wouldn't count on tomorrow. We'll see you on uh, Monday. Having a very nice weekend. Jerry Bailey on the Preakness right after this.